Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us in practice and and uh, for those that have come into the, the live call and for those joining us after on the recording. Um, really happy to share practice with you. <clears throat> I wanted to talk tonight about uh, truthfulness in the Dharma. This is called Satcha. S A C C A. It's the the second C is pronounced like C H, so it's Sacha, Sacha, and <clears throat> truthfulness shows up um, in um, one of the lists called the Paramis, uh, which are the translated as uh, perfections or the the uh, their perfections of the heart, the really skillful qualities, these 10 paramis, and also shows up in the middle path, the Noble Eightfold Path, as part of um, wise speech. Truthfulness is part of that. <clears throat> and uh, it really struck me, this, uh, this teaching, I'll share the link below to this book, um, I've probably mentioned it here before, but Sylvia Borstein's book um, about the perfections of paramis, it's called Pay Attention for Goodness Sake. Excellent book. Uh, Sylvia Borstein, I love her teaching and her writing. It's very approachable and she shares great anecdotes and stories and personal reflections and um, yeah, and she's funny as all get out. Um, which I always appreciate. <clears throat> uh, so in this book uh, is on the, that list of 10 paramis, perfections. And um, in this uh, chapter on truthfulness, it, it really stood out to me. She kind of, well, I tend to think of truthfulness as what I want to say to other people, <laughs> I want you know, say the what I can when I think of truthfulness, I think of this is true for me, and I want to tell you <laughs> this is my truth, basically. Um, I'm also really interested in hearing other people's truth and what's going on for them, what's showing up. Um, recently, uh, there was an experience with. You know, you get that feeling, that gut feeling like hmm, something's up here, or like what in a in a dynamic and like, what's going on? I can feel something's up and really wanting to kind of, what's the word, like pull it out of the other person, like tell me what's going on. What, you know, if I was harmful or unskillful, I really want to know. I want to learn from that. I, I'm really open to hearing um, so I can understand. I just and um, really recognizing that because I'm a processy person, not everybody is. Everyone has their own way and their own time. And some people mm, mm, take more time to reflect. Or and also, I may totally be reading it wrong. You know, I I do trust my gut so to speak fairly well but I also know that we are all filtered we're all reading a room or relating to each other through our own filters so I I'm open to like yeah I might have had that wrong um but what Sylvia Borstein shares here about truthfulness mm, turns it back like a mirror to myself, rather than thinking of truthfulness as what I want to say to someone else, it's like, let's just pause and look as what's true in here, what's happening internally, you know, feeling frustrated, feeling confused, wanting to um, concern that harm may have been caused, you know, like just and it was actually that, um, the discomfort of that, that made me like want to 
process like tell me what's going on or uh instead of just like oh i'm feeling discomfort i'm feeling uncertain i'm feeling confusion so sylvia just does this little turn around truthfulness as more of a self-inquiry um as part of it and she actually equates truthfulness with mindfulness which is very very interesting uh she says here um she talks about not hiding from myself and um, that will inspire me to create intimacy non-gentle judgmental gentle honesty with everyone but uh here she says, I often teach truthfulness as a synonym for mindfulness, which I hadn't really heard before, but it makes sense. Um, truthfulness as paying complete attention, not hiding from anything, even if the acknowledging is unpleasant. So to think of truthfulness as really this inner reflection not hiding from what's happening within my heart body mind um and that's it's not as easy to do as to just like want to tell someone else your truth you know <laughs> it takes a little more it's uh i think it's a little more uncomfortable to really look deeply at, oh, what's happening? Let's be truthful in, in, with myself. Um, and you, you may find that when you do that, there's some resolve that can happen. There might not be as much of a need to process with someone else because you actually just look within and say, oh, that's what's happening in here. I'm needing, I'm wanting, I need to give compassionate care to what's triggered in my own heart and mind. Um, <clears throat> there's several aspects of truthfulness um, that in a previous uh, retreat, it was a daily life retreat in 2021, uh, that I was um, sharing some teachings on. And one of the participants of that retreat, I think it was online, that daily life retreat. Must have been. Anyways, um, one of the participants made this into a gorgeous infographic type thing, which was like, wow, so nice. So I'm going to share it with you. Maybe you can take a screenshot of it or you could email me. I'll, um, and I will happily forward it to you. And the same if you're watching on the YouTube recording, I'll put my email and you can email me if you want me to send you a copy of this. So let me just see if I can screen share here. And I want to show this. Okay. So I hope you can see it, but if not, uh, I'll, I'll send it to you or... Um, I'll just also describe it. So uh, it's down below. There, there's credit given to the the uh, graphic artist here, Andrew Lu Xu, and um, this was based on a teaching from Michael Stone, um, who was one of my teachers many years ago, and um, so credit is also given to Michael. But these are teachings from the Buddha. So before you speak, consider if it is, and so we could follow the red line over to consider if it's untrue or is it true? Now, most of us think, yeah, it's true. What I want to say is true. That's my experience. It's true. But if we pause and reflect a little bit, we could say, well, it's true for me but it might not be true for the other person. They may have a completely different view. So is it an ultimate truth, a universal truth, or is it just 
my personal experience. So right there, we can have some pause. So if it's untrue, it goes to the next big red circle here, don't speak, right? Because we're not, we're not going to speak something that we know is untrue um, because it's going to foster more harm and it's going to disturb our own hearts and minds if we're telling falsehoods. Falsehoods is a nice word for lies, isn't it? Um, so then if we go the other direction, before you speak, consider, and so maybe we decide, yes, it's true. Even if it is just my own experience, that's what I'm experiencing. Okay, so then I'm deciding. Now we can look to the red again. Maybe it's true, but if is it unbeneficial or is it beneficial? So what does that mean? Even though, so <laughs> someone was sharing in another group, another teacher, um, it, it was, what was it, a Tibetan? It was a big, I'm not going to get it exactly right. So I'm just going to paraphrase here, but a student standing up, then they might have been a monastic student or something. They were, they, and And they were like, I've been practicing wise speech and truthful speech and I'm just telling the truth all the time <laughs> telling everybody my truth all the time it's not going so well <laughs> oh my gosh because there's more to it than just is it true is it beneficial to speak about it to you know or is it something that just needs some time and some inner reflection is it is it um is it going to be harmful or is it going to be beneficial? If it's harmful or not of benefit, not of growth, not, not uh, helpful, then don't speak. <laughs> I can hear some of the inner dialogues here. Um, so then we we can go back. Okay, it's true, and I think it's beneficial. It's going to be helpful for them to hear this. I think I'll be able to say it in a way that is kind, and it's not going to be harmful to somebody. Then we have to ask the next question is, is it accepted or unaccepted? So even though it's uh, true, I think it's true. I think it's going to be helpful if they're not going to, if it's not accepted, if somebody's like not receptive, not wanting to hear that, then you reflect. Either you reflect and say, no, I'm not going to, I don't need to say it. I may know it's true. I may think it's beneficial. They're not open to hearing it. I'm going to decide not to speak on that or you might reflect and this is an important one wait for the right time just because you're feeling it right now or want to say it right now does not necessarily mean it's the right time some people need quiet time or they need time to reflect on their own or they need to, you know, be in a place where other people aren't going to hear the conversation. Uh, some people will say to you clearly, like, I'm really upset and I don't want to talk about it right now. I'll let you know when I'm ready to talk about it. So waiting for the right time is a very interesting one. We feel this urgency, like, it's true. I want to say it now. <laughs> and uh, it's really interesting to explore that one a bit. So if we follow these, um, before we speak, consider, is it true? Is it beneficial um, or non-harming? Is it accepted? And is it the right time? Then we speak. <laughs> now, most of us, and most certainly myself, I don't, before I speak, like right now, I'm just speaking. I'm not like, it would be really uh, not possible. 
Oh, it is possible, but mm, it's just not natural to, to stop and like go through everything every time before you speak. So this is really based on when there's something really important that you want to convey and uh, it feels a little bit charged, then it might be really skillful to move through that reflection in that way. Print out that infographic and work through it a little bit and reflect on it. I found the um, this little turn that uh, Sylvia is uh, part of what she's sharing here on truthfulness of um, it's not just about what I want to say, but am I being true in my own self-reflection, naming what's triggered for me and what care, what compassion, self-compassion is needed, um, taking that time to really reflect and, and then seeing, oh, is it the right time? Is it going to be received? Is it um, beneficial? That that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, don't know if there's more here. Let me just see. Um, yeah, I think that's enough. And so this um, can really show up in our meditation practice, how we, it's, it's really a part of our mindfulness practice. As Sylvia says, she's using truthfulness as a synonym for mindfulness. So when we're practicing in formal practice or in daily life, are we really being truthful and naming what's happening in present moment? Aversion is here, grief is here, joy is here, mm. wanting and not wanting, just that, that kind of a practice that um, some people practice a lot with an, a noting practice where you really are naming for yourself what's coming and going in the sensations, thoughts, moods. Uh, sense doors, you know, whatever access you have to the Dharma, perhaps Vedana or feeling tone, which is something we've talked about before. You can just name, oh, unpleasant. And uh, that's a, a practice of being truthful instead of just like daydreaming and fantasizing or ruminating over something that's already happened or projecting worry into the future those aren't very truthful activities right past and future is past memories are really being re rejigged in our memory we're editing a little bit we're revisioning how we wish we'd shown up or you know we we know that everybody's memory is selective and if we're spending a lot of time in future projecting how something's going to be or not going to be or how we want to be, this is also not true. It's not happening. It's not happened and likely not going to happen the way we imagine it. Uh, so, yeah, so the synonym of truthfulness as mindfulness uh, rings true for me. Okay, so let's uh, practice cultivating truthfulness with our own inner reflections and uh, cultivation here. So adjusting your posture or your environment for comfort and wakefulness. Hmm. Uh, really taking time to adjust your posture and bring in any supports you need for, for as much ease as possible.
and not just ease but also uprightness wakefulness some energy some brightness And then really allowing several minutes just to land and arrive in stillness with yourself. So what cues or intentions are most supportive for you? For some people, it's Paying attention to their exhalation is calming, relaxing, grounding. For me, remembering to rest back towards the spine, actually feeling the back of my body, resting back instead of leaning forward, back and down towards the tailbone, the sacrum, pelvis, legs and feet, back and down. And when we feel a little more grounded or presenced, take a few moments to check into any habit tensions in the body and see if some ease or softness or space can be felt with them around any tension. Peaceful face, peaceful shoulders, peaceful hands, peaceful belly. The Buddha taught that bare attention, impartial, sincere interest, without additional commentary, noticing things just as they are, primes the mind for liberating insight. And so it can help us to see how things are if we choose an anchor. And this anchor becomes the canvas on which we can see the unfolding experience. So your anchor could just be the felt experience of the body in the posture it's in. Feeling the sensations, bare experience of present moment, embodied sensations. Let's all check that out together. Movement and temperature, pressure, 
tingling vibration, many, many sensations arising and passing. So your anchor could be the sensations of the body, or you might like to rest with the anchor of the breath. Either one is fine. See what feels most supportive for you tonight or today whenever you're practicing with us. Body sensations or breath. And then take the next few minutes to really cultivate some stability with that anchor that you chose, some curiosity, really paying attention to that sensation coming and going. So at first, we kind of turn up the effort, coming close to the anchor, really pay attention to develop some stability and calm. And now from your anchor, you can begin the practice of noting, which just means telling yourself in words what's happening. The note is very light. Most of the experience is on the direct experience sensations. And just a light one word note where we tell ourselves what's true about the body, about the breath, about your mood or thoughts. So you don't need to try too hard at this or try to name everything. We pay attention to the anchor. And then at some point, we notice the attention has moved to other thoughts. And then you could just gently name, oh, planning or worry, memory. Just give it a light note. 
And then return gently to your anchor. And after a few moments, something else might show up and pull the attention from the anchor. Maybe it's a sensation. You could just lightly note it as pressure or tingling or whatever it feels like. And then return to your anchor again. Sometimes there might be emotions or thoughts. Rather than getting caught in the story, see if you could just name one word of what the flavor of it is. And then gently return to your anchor. Sometimes we might note a hindrance, sleepiness, restlessness, desire, aversion, or doubt. Just lightly noting and returning to the anchor. Sometimes we might notice a sensation, a sound, or a thought as being pleasant or unpleasant.
the truthfulness of this is happening, now that is happening, now this is happening. Notice what happens with it when you name it. Can you see it's passing? And then resting with your anchor. And we can directly experience that this type of truth as mindfulness has these characteristics of being timely, gentle, motivated by kindness, helpful, beneficial.
Mm. So we might like to take this on as a practice this week of um, the intention to have truthful and helpful or truthful and kind speech with myself and others. Um, and see what comes up. <laughs> All right, uh, if you've joined us on YouTube, check the link below to uh, Sylvia's book. And I uh, wonder, I don't know if there's a way to put that infographic on under the recording. I don't think so. I think you'd have to email me for it if you want it. Okay, thank you.